charm. This is so weird, because my life was working fine earlier. Okay. I'm sorry for the technical difficulties, guys. I don't know why this is happening. For some reason, it keeps saying checking connection. At least my curls look cute. <laughs> hey! This, sister, this is my third time starting this live. I had a whole entrance before. You missed the sunglasses, you missed the twerk. <laughs> I had a whole, I had a whole moment. But I'ma just let this sit here. I want people to come back in because I had a cute little group here too. But what's good everybody? My name is Skittles Ortiz. I am a Latinx content creator from the Bronx, New York. Many people know me from the viral sh hit shit Spanish girls say on YouTube. Um, and yeah, I'm here to take over Play Out NYC for tonight. We're about to have a good time in honor of Latinx Hispanic Heritage Month. You already know. I have an awesome lineup of some Latinx creators that are just about to kill it. When we come on here, we're gonna kiki and have a good time. You know what I mean? Um, let me just do this one song real quick and then we'll get to get in. Hey. Huh? You know I had to do this one. <laughs> I don't know who you call it a hold Let's go. I think it's time for you to cream this pussy. Uh, I think it's time for you to cream this pussy. Thick and fruity, and they call me Skittles. I'm all around when I walk in jiggles. Ready, wanna chubby, wanna play me like a fiddle. Put it in deep, booty wave it. Dick on thick, and the pussy on tight. Suck it real sloppy, then I let him take a bite. It's <laughs> a friend, it'll be a cock fight. Wanna taste the remote, let him lick it on sight. Watch me whip it round, hop it up and slip it down. Got that ooey gooey chewy boy, this cookie's well renowned. When he see me, I don't hide. I give him that look this slide. We play doctor, I'm the patient when he ask, I open wide. <laughs> so again, everybody, what's good? My name is Skittles Ortiz. I am a Boricua content creator from the Bronx, New York. Many of you guys may know me from the viral YouTube hit, Shit Spanish Girl Say. You might have also seen me in season two and three of High Maintenance on HBO. And currently, you can catch me every Friday on Sci-Fi's TZGZ, um, Saturday nights at midnight-ish, where I voice Debbie the Panda in Wildlife. So, yeah. We're here to have a good time tonight. I'm bringing on some awesome content creators, entertainers, artists, all around artists. And we're just gonna vibe out, kiki, and celebrate our Latinx heritage. Yes. So I have Gloria Leeds coming through, comedian, content creator. Hey. I also have Anthony Alfaro coming through, singer, lead singer for, um, oh my God, Tony and the Kiki. Yes, also, you know, Broadway superstar. <laughs> and then I also have Lorena Rusi, or Rusi. I, don't, I said Rusi because I was like, you know, gotta say it with that Rusi. <laughs> Comedian. Yes. Hey, 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 hey. But yes. Um, But I just feel like Latinx Hispanic Heritage Month is just super fucking important. Um, it has literally influenced everything I've done um, throughout my life, especially when it comes to content creation, like my community. Everything that I do really is for my community. Um, 
to entertain my community, to highlight my community, to make fun of my community sometimes. Um, and just to all around show love to my community. Um, I think that being a person who grew up as um, in the queer community, as well as being Latinx, that is a very specific type of experience. Um, and, you know, it's not always easy, but it really does... Um, I don't know, make you stronger. And I feel like there's a certain, there's a certain uh, about, I don't know, like people of color who just grow up in the queer community anyway and end up being as confident as we all possibly can be. Um, I'm going to tell you guys right now, the biggest stereotype about me that I step into heavy is you can give me a plate of rice and beans any day, any day. You will give me a plate of rice and beans. You just change out the meat. Like, give me some chicken. Give me some pork chops. Give me some steak or whatever. And it's lit. Like, I'm here for it. Like, I can eat rice and beans till the day I die. Um, and I'm not embarrassed to say it. Fuck out of here. My favorite, favorite meal, which I don't know if it's necessarily Puerto Rican per se, but I love to do a little fried chicken cutlet with white rice and black beans. Frijoles. You already know. Um, and yeah. Uh... Is lit. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna bring on my first guest for the evening, Miss Gloralise Mora, who is a fabulous, fabulous comedian and content creator. Let's get her on here. Ooh, cause there's some hoes in this house. Hey, hey baby. <laughs> Oh my Hello. God, you look not fucking cute. Yeah. Los Angeles, stop. Oh my God, you look mad beautiful. Holy Thank cow. You. Thank you. Holy I cow. That. Where are you? Where are you? I'm in LA right now. I, I went through like, a, I had a fake pandemic breakup. I was like, I got to get the fuck out of here. Bitch. And I'm in LA and Wait. I love it. Pause, pause. Are you going to be in LA till the 13th? No, I actually changed my flight. Like, I, I was supposed to leave last week, but I changed it to leave tomorrow. Uh, yeah. But I'm moving here. I'm going to move. What? I have oh, my God. Calling me. I mean, listen. Listen to your heart. Right, exactly. <laughs> I'm not, and, like, New York, like, nothing's really happening right now. And I do a lot of stand-up. So I'm like, I might as well just come out here and have a little, a little shit in the park. Yeah, oh, and your girls are out there too. I know D Nasty, Sasha right. Mercy, all of like your gang. It's been a it's been a fun time. Like Sasha's been taking me out. She's like every day I'm like, I'm gonna do work. She's like, no, we're leaving. I'm like, fine. Oh <laughs> my god. Yeah. Listen, well, LA looks good on you because you look Thank you. I love right it. I'm beautiful in Los Angeles. Ah, you're here, but you're know? beautiful in New York too. So <laughs> like you're like, you're you beautiful wherever you go. I, I logged in, the curls is out. I'm like, are you trying to get somebody mad? Bitch. Oh my God. Is I'm dance? sitting here. I'm just sitting here trying to catch me a daddy. You know what right, I mean? With the like, Puerto Rican flag? Come on. I need that. Yo. Need that. And oh, it's halfway down now, but. Yeah, I see. I'm like, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, like, the show must go on, right? Right. Production, production. Yeah, I'm so happy you had me here because, like, I've been, I don't know about you, but like creative wise, like some days I'm like, yo, you know what? Fuck this, a pandemic. I'm going to be busy. And other days I'm like, you know what? Fuck my career. It's over. So like when people like you, like our colleagues, people that we do art with, they're like, yo, get the fuck up. We're doing something. It really like brings joy to my heart. Yes. And I'm so happy that you were able to make it because I fucking love your energy and you know I fuck with you hard. So I, you I was too. like, we let's here. let's kiki. Let's fucking yeah. kiki. You oh, know what I mean? You've been keeping me up. You're like, let's do a fucking TikTok video. Let's do yes. it. Fine. <laughs> Fine. Yes, because yeah. I'm obsessed with you. I remember, so for context for our nine people that are in here, listen, right. shout out to our it's nine gonna people. It's going to be on thousands soon. Yes, on thousands. <laughs> um, so a little bit of context is, Glow Release, my first, first memory of meeting you, and we might have met maybe before this, but my first memory of meeting you was watching you perform at the sketch show um, I want to say Latinos hilarious. Allowed, but it wasn't Latinos Allowed. It was a the hilarious one where that Rachel puts all the women on there. Was it earlier or no? Though I saw this in person. I saw this live at oh my god. Was it the Triad Theater? It was on Seventy Second Street. Yeah, the Triad, and I yes. think it was the first time like 
I had just got off stage and there was a guy that was talking about, I don't know, hoeing, that kind of hoe that he was. Yeah. I, I was like, you took the joke mad far. Let me just tell the joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, somebody said that was funny. Thank you, Justin. Yo. I, I love that. Thank you. No, Glory is funny as hell. Like, so I specifically remember that performance and like ever since best. then, like I've just been trying to keep up with you, put you, like work with you if I can. Like we I are. know that I'm not I don't claim to be a stand-up comic at all. Like I haven't done the schooling, I haven't done the training. I am a funny actor, mm -hmm. but that talent is something that I really truly admire. And, and watching is the you, opposite. Like really I'm like, you when I, when I, cause you know, when the pandemic happened, everybody's like, okay, stand up is dead. Like we need to be funny and create content. And it's mm -hmm. not easy to create content the way that you create content, the way that my friends create content. I'm like, this is a whole production. Like you have to think about funny ideas. So I think, I think all of us that are in comedy are kind of benefiting from the other, like, and really value. Yes. Like, you know, stand up. It's not easy. Like sometimes I'll date guys that, like I'm funny and I'm like, bro, like, just like, I promise you, you're not funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, you this for your material, and I'm like, um, I promise you, I won't. <laughs> I'm good, thank you. I was really thinking about it today, and I was thinking yeah. about like my experience as a teacher, mm. and I feel like being a comedian is a lot like being a teacher. A lot of teachers are comedians. Like one of my fun, one of the funniest comics I know, he was a teacher, mad fucking funny, and it's like I can see some parallels between that, but it's it's. It depends. Like with the, I don't. I I, I only say that I only say that to in terms of like the engagement piece. Like yeah, you gotta get I know me as a teacher. Like because as a teacher, you gotta engage those motherfuckers the yeah. entire way through. I'm gonna tell you one thing. I can't. And, the, the kids and me, we don't get along. Like, I tried to <laughs> really? teach one time. I I almost cursed some girl out. I was like, they're gonna get the police on me. I was like, it was like the last day. I was doing city. I don't know if you heard of citizen schools. And I was teaching them no. like an apprentice, like how to do, I was like doing marketing back then. So I was teaching them like how to do marketing. And one of the girls, like she was trying to be cool in middle school. And the last day I'm like, yo, you're not even funny. And it was like, mm. yeah, gonna I can't be a teacher. I'm just not, you know? Yo, but what's so funny is that I feel like you would be a good teacher only because I feel like you, like when I watched you perform, you I helped me too. and I was just like, <laughs> like the entire I, time. You know what? My, my mom is a teacher, and I think seeing her be a teacher and all that paperwork she had in the house, I'm like, I can't do teaching. Like, it's just, I just can't. But I do admire people that do it, and I think it's important for the kids. I just, I need to tell jokes on stage. That's what God is yeah. for, and that's what I'm gonna do. You know? No, I, I, uh, I'm here for it. I feel like I, that terrifies me. The idea of like losing the audience and like i feel like i'd be sinking i bomb all the time and i'd be like you know you just suck my dick and they'd be like you know what i love her I'm like yes yeah, suck my dick that's what i say all the time whenever i'm bombing it's because i say it's like my i say suck my dick that's when you know i'm bombing but you wouldn't know that as an audience member like wow she's so raw i'm like no, i'm bombing oh man <laughs> yeah well listen you cover it up well if I have a, I don't Thank I don't you. think I've ever seen you bomb though but um. no that show you saw me at was like the it was one of my last shows and one of my best shows that I did because you know what I knew that I wanted to do the New York Latino Film Festival comedy competition this year and I knew that the founder was gonna be there so I put when I saw that he was in the audience I put on my best performance but like everything got canceled so I'm like uh. hello Justin hi don't leave I won't leave Justin I'm good <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about hi Justin Justin's my date from Vice I don't know if you've seen my date video yes yeah he's my yes. date hilarious hilarious yeah. so Gloria Lise, you are you're from New York I am from New York I live between Harlem and Washington Heights and I've never really claimed either it's like a, it's like an issue for my for my identity I have an identity crisis <laughs> okay. Your Thank you, Dustin. I love you so much as well. And you are Dominicana. Dominican, baby. Yes. Repping for our Afro Latinas out here. All the Afro Latinas. I'm here to fix yes. the issues that we have. We have some issues in the community. You're the. I think of my of my lineup, you are the one cis het female that I have oh, on the lineup. So you're repping for the straighties. Repping for the you. straighties. I'm gonna tell you something, Skittles. Like the LGBTQ community fucks with me. Like they be going mad hard for me. Like. I did a show. Um, hello. Uh, right, I, hello. That's why we're here, you know? <laughs> I did a show, like, it was called the, it was for, like, a slut web series. That I was just talking about, like, oh, shit. And they were chanting my name. I was like, yo, I need to, so I got to get my ex up jealous on the internet. And they did it. They was like, oh, listen, listen. 
I'm 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 fucking here for it. But aside from just being my cis het lady, right. you are a Latina, Afro Latina. So why don't you tell me a little bit about like about yourself and how, like what being Latina means to you? What being Latinx means to you? Yeah, so like I feel like um, I think when you when you grow up in New York, you have the privilege of being exposed to so much, and mm -hmm. I, I just a lot. My family like wasn't really put together when I was growing up, so I kind of like seeked out a lot of um. I, I guess my identity was developed in the outside world, so like I went to, you know, we all go to school and we're all like mixed, and I'm just like I don't really people don't know like where to place you, so I was always I was always placed like as a light skinned black girl, but people don't know mm -hmm. I'm Dominican. So like I think that made up a lot of my personality and I just grew up in that environment. But like when I start speaking Spanish, like, oh yeah, you're Dominican. And it's like, I'm proud of my heritage, but I do know there's some issues within the Dominican community. Like a lot yes. of colorism that I even experienced within my own family. And I think it's so funny because yesterday we were having girls talk. I'm like, you know, I, what is it that I need to fix in my childhood? And it's like really that childhood validation from like my father. Like he's a white Latino. So if mm. you know, like super white but my mom is like and I just I don't look like my father so it's like I grew up in the household like yo like I'm adopted I don't look like none of you guys you know so yo. I think that's an Afro-Latina conundrum where it's like I inhibit two spaces and I inhibit them proudly but I do know that there is like issues within both of them like it's like I know that as an Afro-Latina I have privilege when I'm in the black community like it's mm -hmm. like oh you're Dominican everybody exoticizes you like even being out here like all the boys are just like Oh, you're Dominican. It's like, bro, first of all, am I going to talk to you? Second of all, please breathe. Let me breathe. You yeah, know? especially out there because there's so few Dominicans. And they out don't there. know. They don't have us out here. So they'd be like, you're Dominican? Like, everybody. I thought I, I knew I was beautiful, but over here, like, they got me out here thinking that I'm like Miss Universe. Like, oh, let man. me breathe. And then within the Dominican community, like, sometimes I feel like I don't fit in within the own, my own Dominican community. And it's like, so I think that's, I think every Afro-Latina has their own story of how, like, the term kind of consolidated their experiences for them. But for me, it was more like, you know, I've always been Black, always Black Latinx, but... Yes. Somebody said Dominican capitalist. But then with the Afro-Latina, that helped me to um, really understand my privilege. It's like, you know, I do inhibit this space, but I have a privilege, but I'm still never gonna, like, step my boundaries, and I'm gonna always stick up for, like, even with the whole Megan Thee Stallion thing, like, believe Black women, that's where I'm at. Yes, I'm come on. That's where I'm at. Yes, so that's, and that's what everybody needs point. to be, honestly. That's 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 right. just period point blank. Like whether you identify as Afro Latino or not, like no facts. Yeah, people need to just really be be about that, be about that inclusivity, be about that intersectionalism, and exactly. you know. And I'm also in a black sorority, so it's like those are the women that yes, I, always, come on. I am. I'm a day tough. Thank you. A lot of people don't know. All right. And, um, those are the women that always looked out for me, like. When I was lost in school or like just growing up, like it was always black women that were looking out for me. So it's yeah. like, but now I do feel like this responsibility of when you're first generation, I feel this responsibility of like, I have to speak to my community. I always kind of like ignored it. Like, you know what? I am Dominican, but I'm going to step in it when I feel like it. But when mm -hmm. everything happened, I'm like, nah, I got to speak to these people. Like I too got excluded from my community and I need to be like, nah, like y'all got me fucked up. And I'm going to be the, the biggest Dominican stand-up comedian. So I'm going to have to talk to them. Yes, come on, Miss Legendary. Thank you. Thank come you. on, Miss Legendary. Thank you, you know? So, that's So, in terms of, like, what what is one, like, I put, and I, and I have written this uh, down as, like, Latinx tradition or custom mm -hmm. that you, that I uphold in your day-to-day -day life that, like, that you just grew up doing like i know for me yeah you know um literally cooking dinner like a home-cooked dinner i know right. and i know that's not to say that's specifically latinx but in my cooking abilities it's only puerto rican food that i cook with yeah. like a fresh ass sofrito you know like oh, my, everything day. about my 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 experience in the kitchen is Latinx and yeah. I grew up where my mother made me a home cooked meal every day and as an adult growing up and even you know throughout my life that has been something that I really do uphold in terms of like just from everything from like the seasonings to like what I'm Relax. able to cook and you know like that's something that I truly hold to what is what is a Latinx tradition custom that you I don't go a day without doing 
it's weird too because like like you said like it can be a custom that's really unique to us but like with that's culture like that's how we survive day to day and i feel like for me my latinx uphold the things that i uphold are kind of more spiritual like I mm. always pray Adotorida, everything. Yes. Like, it's not really like Dominican, but I'm like, yo, like, I don't know if it's if it's working or not, but I need to cleanse my space. So I yes. always pray Adotorida. And before I leave the house for protection, I always pray um, Adotorida on my body, especially when I'm performing on stage. I always have like my little mal de ojos. Like, I'm very big into that because especially like people, te tiran cosa, like when you're on stage. I'm like, I'm in front of so many people, I don't want no hate my way. So I always do protect myself with like, little like crystals or uh, my little uh, my de ojo bracelet and the other thing that i do is gonna sound very like miss universe but i pray every night like every night i pray to god I don't know, too. right i'm like i don't know what we doing oh the other thing on top of that i always check my whatsapp once a day that's very latinx yo yeah. i feel like my family exclusively <laughs> communicate it's on just WhatsApp. like i don't know we talk like every day they got a new little flower good morning shit it's like, right it's it? it's always the little gif with, right. the good morning. Uh, with little sparkles and shit like with video. little sparkles or recently bitmojis bitmojis right. have been real big i'm just like who's making this for the community yo and then what's even funnier is that i'll have like my titis and my my mother who don't really fuck with social media mm -hmm. sending me content that's going viral yo all the via time. whatsapp right but some of that viral content like they're like yeah y'all can't be sharing this shit it's a little racist y'all know yo. that right so i don't be opening it and i you know what i hate when it goes straight to my my photos i be i be opening and it's my saved. Photos. It be having mad weird shit in there. I'm like, who saved this? Sorry, it's, I'm just like in a high traffic area, so I gotta move a little bit. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that's like my most Latin next thing. But I do think that f through food, um, that's how we preserve the culture. And I do something like I've been getting more into is just making sure like I learn my grandma's recipes. Like she's getting a little bit older, nice. so like I try to save her recipes and my mom's stuff. My specialty is a, I call it a Dominican lasagna. Like when I'm in love with somebody, I'm gonna make. I've only made it for like two men. I make them my little lasagna. Ooh, you got a special lasagna, Glory. Because I know that I know that's the one. Like I could make a lasagna. Yes. Yeah. I love I love Dominican gatherings that always have a lasagna at it. Like I feel like every Dominican house party that I've ever been to has a lasagna at it. So that's right. like that's an important thing to fucking know how to do. Um, and my last. I'm gonna. Oh no! I'm gonna ask you two more things. Two more yeah. things. Two more things before I get. Anthony on here. Mm -hmm. Firstly, you said what? <laughs> I can't hear what we. What did you say? <laughs> I said I'm gonna ask you two more things. Oh yeah, yo, I've been not deaf on this trip. I don't know what's going on, but I've been deaf. I've been so deaf. Yo, your ears are still popping from that five hour flight. From that That's flight, what's yeah, yo. But so you gotta on. do though, Glory. You gotta go like this. I haven't done it. I'm gonna do it on the way back. I'm going back tomorrow. I'm gonna clean my. I'm gonna just. You know, do all that. That's very Dominican. That's very Yo, Dominican. yes. A true true I'm a true gum. I'm a clapper. Yo. I'm a plain clapper. What is your, what is your, what is your one Latinx dish that you will go, like, the rest of your life you can eat every day? I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to eat asopao, camarones, and aguacate every day on the island. Like, I will slurp, slurp the shit out of an asopao. Like, that's my shit. So, that's me. My mom makes it a little bit aguau. I don't be telling her that. But, um, <laughs> right. <laughs> But the the right um asopao, like I would slurp the shit out of the asopao. Yo, Somebody I said. fucking love asopao. Yeah. So I last thing, is there anything that you're working on that you wanna share, that you want people to pay attention to, follow? I know that you're hosting your podcast, um yeah. vibes. And overdrafts. I have, and a, overdrafts. I have a podcast. It's been the only thing I've been able to keep up, but like what I'm really working on is my special, is my comedy special. It's coming out in two years. I'm going to give it a date. It's called Stupid Bitch. Yes. And it's about how we do real stupid shit when we like somebody. Like, you don't even, it's going to be a culture shift. Like, I promise you. And the other thing I'm working on is a, a Dominican rom-com. Fuck it up. I'm going to make a fucking Dominican rom-com. Because the thing is that if I can't have the love story of my dreams, I'm going to write it. Yes, come on. Hello. Come on, manifesting you know, your own through art. Through art. And that's is what it's And then let life it. imitate art. Exactly. It really does. So, like, that's special. I hope none of my exes call me for a check because they will not be getting a check. But it's inspired by them. 
Yo, that ass. Well, Glory, thank you so much for joining thank me. Like I said, me. you look beautiful. Thank I'm you. tight that you're coming back tomorrow because I know. I'm going to LA on Friday. Damn. And I would have known, yo, mad people was out here. If I would have known, I would have stayed long. I was going to fuck around and stay for the whole month because I'm going to move here. So I'm like, I was going to look for apartments and shit. Listen, I've been, I, that is a, that is literally the fact that you're even making that decision and like making the moves to go towards that goal is something that I admire so hard because for years I've always said that I want to live out there at least this for a little house. bit to just see what it's like but I've always been scared to, Me to take that leap. So I'm afraid of flying, so I was gonna dead ass not come. I'm happy that I got over that stupid ass fear. But it's like the vibe here because we're from New York and the East Coast. People are not used to this kind of energy. Like everywhere I'm mean, like, wow, like I really love you. I'm like, I'm a regular ass bitch. Yeah, I just yeah. don't know how to be, you know. So I yeah. really have had a good time and like the weather has really been helpful for my creativity. Well, I am yeah. I love hearing that. And I look forward to everything that is in store with you and i look forward to working with you no, we're gonna you have are. you in we in might, something we might be in the rom -com. we might have a little puerto rican cameo yes like listen i'm a really great best friend right i can see i know <laughs> I, we might have to make honestly i like that i'm just I saying i like that. not for I nothing like but i'm not like funny nothing. too <laughs> so i've been seeing yo the production i saw the music video i'm like we need to just we need to elevate this because i rest Right. Progress, but I had a great yes. time. I know you have like a million people and I'm a Gemini. I talk forever. Uh, so. I love kicking with you. Thank you so I much for hopping on. I cannot. We'll, we'll be in contact. I'll, yeah, we'll I'll hit touch. you up. In, I'll slide in your DMs. Okay. I love you. Mm. I will love you later. Bye, baby. Bye. 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 How do I? Okay. All right. So what's good, everybody? That was Gloria Lise Mora. She was live from LA, but she's from New York. Um, she is a comedian. Go ahead and follow her. I will put her at in the comments. Gloria Lise Mora. Hey, hey, hey. If you are just tuning in, please go ahead and send this to all your friends so that we could get a little bit more of a crowd in here. You already know. Team Skittles, I see you in the building. I'm going to do a couple of shout outs. Shout out to Boogie Shoes. Shout out to Savage Geek. Shout out to the New York Dose. Shout out to um, Green Langdell. Shout out to Toro. Shout out to Adiza, Jessica, Michael Zanga, Zaddy. You know, I love you. Next up, we're bringing up Anthony Al Faro, who is a Broadway superstar, who is also the front man of Tony and the Kiki. So go ahead and stream him on all your platforms, iTunes, Spotify, you already fucking know. And, um, and yeah, let me see if I could get you on here. Hey, Tony. Hey. I like the things you do. Hey, Tony. Ha, ha, ha. Hi! Hey. Bitch, look at this hair! Yes, you know. Look at this hair! This quarantine no cut. Bitch, wait, fuck. Ooh! Ooh, she's hot! I'm trying to keep up with you, girl. You look so hot! Excuse oh, me! Can I get everybody to put flames in the comments because this glow is sickening, bitch. Yes. Hi! Hi, baby. How are you? I'm good, and you? Good. <laughs> so why don't you go ahead and tell our 12 audience members in the building exactly who you are and why being Latinx, how, how it has influenced you throughout your life. Okay. So I'm Anthony Alfaro. So, like, I'm from Queens, right? So, like, I would say, like, Anthony Alfaro my whole life, right? But, mm -hmm. like real name is Anthony Alfaro. You know what I mean? Alfaro, come on. That's like the proper way to say it. So like, I feel like even that journey from like Anthony Alfaro, like from Queens, who like everyone just assumed is Italian because my first name is Anthony, you know, to being like, no, my name is Anthony Alfaro, you know, like I'm Cuban, Colombian, Nicaraguan, and Italian, but like, you know what I mean? Like, yes. So, wait, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> 
how has being Latino like influenced your your life? You know, and and who and tell us also who you are like. Okay, well, I said Broadway superstar. I said frontman of Tony and the Kiki, but who is Anthony Alfaro? Um, well, you know, I'm loud as fuck. I think that's Latinx AF. Yes. Um, so loud. Like, I remember when I first started taking the train with my white friends at LaGuardia. Um, <laughs> you know, that they were like, shh. And I was like, why? <laughs> you know? And I feel like that. And then it took me a while to realize, like, my family, we just, like, speak in screams. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, what? Okay! You know what I mean? Like, that's, like, <laughs> that's kind of, like, bled into, like, my singing, right? Like, I feel like I pride myself on having, like, a big voice and, like... Yes, belting. But if you listen, belter over here. But if you listen, belter over here. But if you listen to my grandma, my who I call Lala, because I couldn't pronounce Abuela as a kid. Uh -huh. um, if you listen to Lala call us for breakfast... Anthony! Banque! You know, like, her placement... Ming her space. Belt her belt is lit. You know, she's calling across the mountains of Colombia every time she calls for us. So Yes! So I definitely feel like that's something that, like, before I used to be like, oh, my God, I'm so loud. Like, all the cool kids are quiet and, like, moody. And, like, I'm so loud and vibrant. Like, uh, you know? But I feel like... Don't turn like, down your... Don't turn down your shine for nobody, bitch. Exactly. So that's kind of been part of the journey for me. And then also it's, like, um, you know, growing up wanting to be an actor, you know, and, like, going to these schools for acting and singing or whatever. It's, like a lot of like a white aspiration or like, you know, I, I am like part white Latino. Mm -hmm. So like that is a part of my experience, but it's like, I always wanted to be like that blonde haired, blue eyed, you know, lightly tanned guy that was just gonna like get everything. And like, even though like I was aspiring to like being a better performer or being a better artist, like it was only until a couple of years ago, I was like, oh boo, like you were trying to be like, all American boy next door. Like, that's just not your story, honey. Like, mm. and that's okay. Like, before you see that, oh my God, you know, so fam, like, so whatever. And it's like, well, no, those are the things that are gonna, I'm so fam, so loud, all this kind of stuff. But like, that's the kind of thing that's gonna set me apart from the crowd, you know? Mm. And I feel like I look at people like you and like, you are like in your skin. You know what I mean? Like, you are Boricua as fuck, like Bronx as fuck, and like, you give no fucks, you know? So like, I feel like I, it's only recently that I've kind of been like, oh my God, like I need to own that, you know? Like, yes. Well, I know? think it doesn't matter whether it was, whether it was, you know, yesterday or 20 years ago that you had that realization. The important thing is that you came to that realization because, you know, there's a lot of other people that are walking around that have not. <laughs> Right. And that have not really like embraced their culture and embraced, you know, you know, right. their identity. What'd you say, sorry? Like have that have really embraced that part of themselves. Absolutely. And I feel like I always had mad shame because like my Spanish sucks. You know what I mean? So like Same. I would see like, you know, even like in high school, like people like you and Julissa, like you can just go in and out of Spanish and you're just talking and like I would be like, Oh, well, you know, I can't claim that I mean. Um and that's kind of been <laughs> like, I feel like with, you know, um, content creator, uh, like, like platforms like Me Too and stuff like that, like people like Kat Lazo, like calling it out and being like, you know, talking about how like, there are a lot of Latinx people who are like first generation, second, gener second generation, third generation, whatever, they don't speak Spanish. And like, <laughs> so, you know, like I still have, thousands of ancestors from Cuba, Colombia, and Nicaragua. So like, just because I'm still learning to speak this language and I'm just realizing like, oh no, like I should just keep working at it and keep trying to talk to Lala and Oello in Spanish and whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, whereas before I was like, oh, well, you know, I'm not really that because like, I can't speak like them, you know, like I don't have the skill to do it. So, so yeah. So that's how kind of like my, my Latinx journey has been. And um, it's been really beautiful because I feel like um, for so long, I didn't, you know, it's not that I was ashamed of it, but it's kind of like, I didn't, I don't know that I saw it for as like how magical it is, mm. entity, you know, like, and like kind of, um, and, and then it's kind of the thing of like, yeah, I'm Latinx, but like, 
people on the subway, like depending on, you know, what outfit I'm wearing or whatever, they might not know that. Mm -hmm. so, like, myself and my privilege, you know what I mean? And being like, you know, I then have to speak up, you know what I mean? Like, yes. Like, y'all are mad racist, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> even though, like, you know, you have a thick accent or whatever, and like you were discriminated against, like, now you're being mad racist, you know? Like, so I feel like it's been kind of like a journey of like, okay, I'm not this white boy drama school, whatever bullshit. And then I'm like, okay, I'm like this Latino from New York. And then it's like, okay, but wait, like, you know, you have a lot of white passing privilege, white Latino privilege, like, speak to that, speak up, you know, talk to your family, talk to your community and like, own it and live in the in between. I feel like that's, that's kind of what it's been. It's like living in the in between and not feeling like, oh, I don't have like that one thing to be like, I'm this, you know? Yes. Not but I think that, that it's a beautiful thing for it to be a journey of you learning and embracing. And like I said before, I think that that's really what's most important is that you mm -hmm. did come to that realization and you are embracing um, your Latinx side and, and, and are willing and able to speak up for it as well. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to, you, after hearing you speak, I was thinking about um, your experience on uh, the Gloria Stefan show, On Your Feet, is it called? Yeah, and, and how that, like, what was that experience like in having this journey and in, like, you know, coming to this realization and wanting to embrace it and being able to do it on the stage? Right, so the thing is that, um, so, like, I always had, so here, I'm going to tell you a story real quick. So, like, LaGuardia, we're finishing up LaGuardia, right? Like, I bombed all my college auditions. They were mad whack. Like, I was not nailing it. I got into, like, one and a half schools. I was mad sad about it. Sorry, that was ghetto. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to move. Oh, you know, so then, then they were like, okay, drama majors, like, we want you to do, like, oh, we, we have, like, an alumni event. Like, we need you to do uh, monologues. Okay. So I was doing this monologue and I, it's like the monologue is like an actor telling a story. Right. So I, uh, and, and in the story, it's like, he's like, does this impression of a director. So I always did it as like this white affected director, you know, like, Oh, you know, like if you could just stand there, you know, all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. that's what it was. And then right before I went on, I was like, you know what? I fucking hate this monologue. This is some bullshit. You know, I'm just going to do, I'm going to do an impression of my grandma do, being this director. Mm -hmm. and, the house erupted and I was like, oh shit, like do more of that, you know, yes. like, be that, like you're not this white affected boy from Park Slope, like that's okay, boo, be, be, be on the E train being, you know, you as fuck, you know, yes. like, so, so in all of that, like that was kind of like from that to graduating college, I was like, okay, you know, like. I have to own this and like I, I came to love it even more and that like I was like no like I get to do this uh, like shows like in the heights right and like yes I was like, God, like I this is my family this is my community like I've heard people say things like this like when she's like um a Dominic oh, what does she say I'm oh, what does she say I'm Colombian. I'm Dominic Cuban uh I'm I'm fuck uh, oh my god <laughs> I'm my my mom is from Cuba. My dad is from Chile. And PR, which means I'm Chile, Dominican, Rican. But I always say I'm from Queens. <laughs> like that's me, you know? Cause I'm yes. I'm being a Caribbean and a quarter Sicilian, but I'm from Queens, you know. So like, <laughs> so in like owning that, I was like, okay, like this is where I'm gonna be able to cut through in showbiz, you know? What yes. I mean? Be able to and like. So then, sorry, man, long-winded, but then it's like, I auditioned for the show a bunch of times, it wasn't working out, you know, whatever, and through this thing, like, I was like, I had to teach myself to dance salsa, you know what I mean? Like, I had to work on my Spanish pronunciation when I sang, like, all these kind of things, and in that, even though I didn't book the show right out, like, I developed these skills that it was yes. so, you know what I mean? And then I was like, oh my God, like I can now go dance salsa with my mom at the party and not feel like a fool, you know? Yes. I can sing along to the Mark Anthony song and like not sound, not be like, oh, what I can't, oh, what I can't, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. That was amazing. And then when I finally got to do the show, it really was a magical experience because you know how Latin people are. You show mm -hmm. up like, 
usually people are friendly. Like when you come to a new show, like people are like, hi, nice to meet you. Mm -hmm. You know, Latin people, they were like, oh my God, oh my God, this is damn good place. Oh my God, hugs, kisses. <laughs> you know, where are you sitting? You know, and I was like, so I have all my titis and cousins in other yes. places on the road with me. And then there were kids on in the show. So like their moms or their grandmas were like their chaperones. So like they would have cookouts, they're cooking tostones, yuca. Oh my and, like, God. And, and then we would transfer that to like our rooms. Like after the show, you go to the hotel and like me, Nancy, Jonathan, Marina, like we're kikiing, but like Nancy's cooking up some yuca on the hot plate and like, uh... where, you know, so like, that was just like so beautiful, like beyond words to me, because it was like I I never felt I never felt that validated because like that was like you know the biggest that's the biggest theater job I've done, mm -hmm. but I never felt a sense of community ever in my life in the theater, you know. Wow. So it was really beautiful and like yes, of course it was wild to like be like hi Gloria Stefan, you know, like in my robe, you know, in my underwear, and she was like. Oh, hi, like in all white, looking like, you know, a Cuban goddess. Oh, my and, God. So, like, it was it was so special. And then and then also, like, we performed with the Miami Sound Machine, you know? So, like, the literal sound machine. People who wrote the songs are there playing behind me. And I'm like, you know, it was just so full circle and so beautiful. And, like, even that, like, Christmas that we came back, we had, like, a layoff. Mi tierra came on. And I'm like, oh, my God. Like, I play with these musicians. Oh, my God. <laughs> And now they're playing at Thanksgiving or Christmas like they always do on the radio, you know, on the CD player. And it's like, you know, it just was, it was a really, really beautiful experience. I have chills. Like you are, you're talking and I have chills. Your literal, oh. literal career goals, like literal experience goals. I think the same thing about you. High maintenance is my shit. And when ah! I was watching it, and you were like, hello, are you up? I was done. I <laughs> Oh, I didn't know I had seen something here and there and I was like, oh cool, Skittles is even whatever, you know. And I missed your first episode, but I saw that one first and yes. I was like, is it fucking Skittles right now? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so so I feel the same way about you, boo. Oh man. Well, I loved every bit of that story and I think that that was really like the epitome of what we're here doing today, celebrating celebrating our heritage and really speaking to how we've come to like, um, you know, grow in, our, grow in our culture and how it's really affected us and how it's affected our art. Um, what is, I'm gonna ask a completely different question. What is your one Latinx dish that you could eat every fucking day? Yuca al mojo. Yuca boiled with like a good delicious mojo sauce, extra virgin olive oil pickled the pickled onions the pink pickled onions that are oh i always ask more i'm like oh, a little bit more and you know you know like i practice because i'm working on my spanish right so i'm like onion cebolla cebollo i'm like oh i don't know just go i'm like my cebolla <laughs> and they're like what i'm like more onion please <laughs> so that i love that you know i grew up eating black black beans and white rice yes but, come on frijoles Frijoles negros, but it's been an it's been like I've been crossing over to the dark side, or should I say the red side? Because that Puerto Rican red bean, she is she's everything to me. She's let like Let me tell you. Let me tell you something how I cook a I cook a I cook a solid bean. I cook a solid, solid bean. I cook a solid bean and I am an equal opportunity bean lover. Yes. Right, um, right. I, they both give they give different vibes. Go yes. Ahead. Yeah. And like, what's crazy is, and I didn't realize that, I guess Puerto Ricans do this, and the person that I was speaking with was Colombian. There was one time in college where I was, it was like literally the one other Latina in my class. And <laughs> I, was, I was visiting her, because I had graduated already, I was visiting her, and I was like, yo, I'm gonna cook, you know, I'm gonna make arroyada habichuela, and like, I'm gonna make all this shit, whatever. And I ended up cooking or whatever, but when she saw me cooking my beans and she saw me making the fresh sofrito mm. and, and then putting it all in the beans with the potatoes and all that stuff, mm -hmm. she looked at me and she was like, 
you make it as if you're making a soup. We usually just put the can in the pot and heat Nobody. it up. Nobody. And I was like, why? why? And now I don't want to call out, I don't want to say that this is a generalization of all Colombians because I'm sure that there are Colombians that probably use their sofrito, but that particular Colombian just really blew my fucking mind. Like, how do you not put sofrito and sazón in your beans? So here's the tea. My grandma's Colombian, right? But my grandpa's Cuban. So, you know, patriarchy. She learns how to cook his his food, you know, <laughs> like his wife. So Wilma throws down like mm. a Cuban woman. So it's like she knows how to cook that Caribbean, good sofrito, onion, garlic, pimientos, whatever. Pimientos, mm -hmm. not the last letter of these words. But um, so like, I feel you on that. Like, you need to have the fresh sofrito. Yeah, no, I, I mean, it's a must. <laughs> it's an absolute must. So yeah, so it's a sofrito with the yuca, white rice, red or black beans, maybe both. And I love a tosone, but I also love a maduro. So like- uh, Both, why both? not? Both. ¿Por qué no las dos? <laughs> no. And you know what I love to do as a kid? I used to take the tostón and I would put like um, the rice and the beans and then eat it like it was like an hors d'oeuvre like that. Yeah. And I hate doing that. Yes. <laughs> well, <coughs> oh, I'm about to die. <laughs> Anthony, thank you so much for coming on and talking with me and celebrating yeah. with me and kikiing with me. Um, yeah. Is there anything that you are working on? Anything that you want to promote? Like, do you want to sing something? Because you can sing. <laughs> well, I will say that I'm, um, I front a band, like you said, Tony and the Kiki. You can follow us at Tony and the Kiki. Um, but so we just put out, we put out a single a couple weeks ago, but we're like in the process of like writing and recording and producing an album. So that, that stay tuned for that. It's probably going to be next year because how this election we need a way for this to pass so absolutely swallowed by that but yeah so we're gonna put out a new album and it's definitely got like a 70s rock you know vibe but like also 2020 also like electronic moments you know so it's um yeah so i'm really excited about that i mean um i could sing something like what do you want me to sing i don't know give us a little bit of mark you said you sing mark so give us a little bit of mark Oh shit, you put me on this. Um wait, let me sing. Let me sing. I I'm gonna sing what I sing, Oye Mi Canto. Because yes, I come on, Oye Mi Canto. Okay. Shout out to Lady Subronche. Shout out to Lady Subronche, Julissa, I love you. Okay. Sé que aún me queda una oportunidad. Sé que aún no es tarde para recapacitar. Sé que nuestro amor es verdadero y son los años que me quedan por vivir. Demostraré cuánto te quiero. <laughs> yes! Can I get a hand clap emoji in the comments? <laughs> oh, I love you. Yes! Thank you so much for hopping on this live. Thank you so much for speaking with me. We need to, we need to, I feel like I've only seen you at events. We need to like brunch it. We need to actually get you. We need uh, to kiki. Yeah, we just need to kiki. We need to kiki with Tony. Hello? <laughs> Listen, no, everybody, me? go follow Anthony Alfaro at Anthony Alfaro on Instagram. Go follow him at Tony on, and the Kiki on Instagram. Go stream them on iTunes, Spotify, and all your favorite streaming services. Thank you so much for kikiing with me, Tony. <laughs> I love you. I'm person. Person. Okay, in person. Yes, please. You're the best. Wow, guys, if you're still with me, I hope that you guys have enjoyed both my guests, Gloria, Gloria Lee Mora.
was here before and we were just kicking about her experience being an Afro Latina and how that has shaped who has she become. We just talked to Anthony Alfaro and he spoke about his experience as a white Latino and how that has shaped how he has come. Um, and so I think it's just been a great conversation. We have one more person coming up, Miss Lorena Rusi, a comedian. I'm so excited to have her on and to Kiki. Let's go. Thank you for the curls comments, curl queen. Hey! hey! Yes. Look yes. at this oh, bitch's oh, oh, curls. Oh, oh. Oh, they talking God. about bitch. my curls, but look at this bitch's curls. Bitch, you made me feel terrible. I show up here like a softball father, have a gin and tonic, like I'm retired and going through a divorce. Then I see your ass half naked with your hair done, <laughs> and I'm like, I have to change. And this was me changed and looking nicer. Um, um you look great. What product do you use? Thank you. So right uh, now, right now, what's in my hair is Cantu Beauty. So I have the leave-in uh, conditioner, and then I also have the um. Pantu, pa wait, like Pantene or like Pantu, like Panther, but like not. Oh, oh, Cantu. It's all reverse. Wow, that's oh. making me feel very intoxicated. Yeah. So this is. I this was is like. The <laughs> This is the leave-in conditioner from Cancel Beauty, and then this is the oh. uh, leave-in conditioning mist. And so I have both of those in my we hair need right the now. the mist. We need, like, a cute little Jurassic Park uh, Yes, because it's cute when you want to give it, like, the, the curly, wet look and just, like... Yeah, that's me. I'm like, <laughs> I'm sorry, can I get the curly, wet look? I would like the curly wop. I want the wop for my curls. <laughs> the curly wop. <laughs> yeah, and then my hairdresser's like, please get out. We're in the middle of a <laughs> pandemic. <laughs> Um, I have you heard about sorry, I know I'm supposed to introduce myself, but you know what? Everyone that's been on has been so good and professional and it's just not gonna happen with me, you guys. So I just have a lot to say. Okay, Lorena's fucking hilarious. Y'all get ready. Yeah, yeah, y'all get ready because honestly, my main thing, and this is not me just after maybe three gins, but I might have a tip pop out in this shirt because it is vintage and the buttons are old, okay, and my tits are huge. So if they pop out, please comment because I really can't afford the PR nightmare of a tip popping Honestly. out. But Honestly. I think what we need to do is I'm yes, this probably. right now that Play Out needs to get you in, as a brand ambassador. They need to send you oh my God. a cute little peace, love, I resist tank top and some cute little boy shorts. Yes, uh, I am here. <laughs> I am here for it. I am a things ambassador. I'm ready to move laterally yes. to the non-period related because we can't contain what's down there. And I, they Perfect. might even have sports bras. I don't. I can't remember if they do. But let's judges. Say. Yeah. Oh my god. I love a sports <laughs> bra. Oh my god. Bitch. I haven't worn a bra. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. You're you're in charge. A protocol. No. 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 Listen. Listen. We are Kikine. This is what it is. But why don't you go ahead and tell our whole nine people who are in here oh, who you are goodness. and how being Latina has affected you, or has oh my god. Like why is it important? Well, how was that like, part of imagine, life? well, I'm a white supremacist, and that's what I'd like to bring to the table. No, but in this lighting, I really look like one. Um, no, my name is Lorena or Lorena. <laughs> I, I could talk more and more about how no one gets my name right in all of my uh, Zoom meetings. It's very awkward over Zoom, but no one gets my name right. Um, Latinidad is obviously very important to me in that, like, I'm a nerd, okay? I love a good level of nuance, right? I look like Rita Yankovic, I think, growing up. I had a lot of the, the five Latinas in my high school. So I'm from Queens as well. Like everyone else, I have an attitude problem. Um, and the five Latinas at my school were like, you're not Latina enough. And I'm like, okay, great. And then all the like straight hot blonde girls were like, you're not straight enough or blonde enough. So I lived basically it was like me and the like sewer creature of my high school. were like, we're going to be best friends. And that's why I'm a comedian. <laughs> but basically as I got older, I was like, yeah, I don't know. I just really got into my Latinidad and I think intersectionality is huge for the queers, for the Latinos. Not Weird Al, bitch. Yes, Weird Al. Yes, Shia LaBeouf during quarantine. That's my look. Um, but yeah, I think... <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like, man, it's so... What's really great about this live, like, it's been incredible to watch 
four different Latinos in one sense. No, none of us are even remote. Like we all can like kiki and hang out, but we all have such different stories. And it's like, when are we going to see the media reflect all four of us? Like, bitch, when you were right? like, I'm a great best friend. I'm like, I'm a great best friend. That's like my, I love being the best friend. You know, I don't, Anyway, so Latinidad, you know, we can take multitudes. <laughs> it's, you know, I almost got a PhD. I decided to be a professional soccer player. And then from there, I, like, did comedy. So, you know, I just, I'm over everything. I'm ready to, like, create discourse. I'm ready to create change. Let's have 14 mediocre Latino TV shows. Because, like, I don't need each of them to be excellent, although that'd be fucking great. But, like, why can't I have the Goldbergs for Latinos? Like, why, why not now? Anyway, that's my rant. Exactly. No, I fucking love it. I fucking love it. And so obviously, uh, can you tell us a little bit about what that experience was in terms of like, I almost got a PhD and then I decided to do yes. this. And I'm a comedian, like, because I feel like being a Latina, that must have been crazy. At yeah. least because the stereotype is that Latinos are all about education because you got to get a better life. You got to gotta get a job. You got to Yeah, this, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so what was your journey like? Yeah, well, I was really lucky in that my dad is a teacher, so he's very into academia, but he also was a professional soccer player. So we're very really similar in that, like, we're nerdy jocks. So we <laughs> love discipline and structure, but we're, like, like, don't know how to fight people, but, like, can get into a fight, if that makes sense. Just, like, it's really interesting. I think talk about, like, code switching. I have like 14 different code switches. Like on a <laughs> soccer field, I am toxic masculine Brad. Like you don't want me on your team. I'm like, you think you're good? Yeah, I'll fucking kill you. Like it's not okay. <laughs> but I also like had a capacity for school and I really loved it. And I really love learning and education. I'm actually really curious to hear about your teaching background because I was a teacher for a minute. And well, yeah, I, yeah I'd love to talk about it. But um, blah, blah, blah. I basically was per, I had an opportunity to study with Judith Butler in, mm -hmm. in terms of gender studies. So if you guys don't know, Judith is Judith, one of her same bases, we're not. Um, they are like one of the pillars of uh, gender and one of the most like formative books and literature that has been created on gender and like within like the most recent century is I think founded by Judith in terms of like they are a thing. Come on, Judy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I decided to not do it because I really wanted to pursue soccer because I thought I really only had up until like 24, 25 to play. And I didn't mm -hmm. want to have, I only wanted to play for like a year because I really, you know, athletics is not three dimensional. It's very much athletes get taken advantage of. Like I have arthritis in my back from like an injury from 10 years ago that like no uh -huh. one yeah, no one takes it. I look 16, you know, like, that's like, not okay. Like, I should be like, la, la, la. And I'm like, I spent $400 at a chiropractor. So fast forward to that whole time, I had been doing comedy, and my soccer career ended. And I got a job at the late show because I'd been training and doing the thing. And then it sort of all just escalated from there. But I was just really lucky that I, I think a lot of people, a lot of marginalized people face horrific situations me included in that and like I just chemically and like just internally face problems with a laugh and being solution oriented and like I just yeah like you get it right like our defense mechanism is laughter and it's kind of like I don't know I should be sadder but I'm just like <laughs> yeah I'm gonna be a leader and get us out of here you know <laughs> that kind of thing. so that's what my journey looked like a little bit yeah. Well, okay. I just need to say this because I see the time ticking that we have yeah, yeah, yeah. in it till they kick us Amazing. off. But I'm oh gonna God, I'm gonna sign on again just to fin just to like because I wanna I wanna chat with more with you. I wanna hear more from you and then okay. we wrap it up. Um, okay. but uh Sorry, I just like that the the time. No, I know, off. I know. No, no, and no, now I'm like constantly looking seconds. at we it. We got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um well we're talking about teaching you were a teacher yes teaching teaching yeah i was a teacher i i mean i am a teacher i uh, i have Will like a foot a in and out of teaching it's okay. it's really all right 
I want to get into this, but I'm gonna I'm gonna end the live and then restart so that we can we can get into this because this is about yeah. to be this is about to be a, a key key. Ready? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'll see you soon. I'll see you soon. All right.